Welcome to Bell Talks. Today I'm speaking with uh, the director of Gunnar Goes Comfortable, Gunnar Hal Jensen. So my first question for you, Gunnar, is how are you and are you comfortable? Yes, I'm comfortable. I have learned some tricks uh, through the years and uh, so, so I'm comfortable. I, uh, uh, I have, of course, as you know from the film, many demons in my personality, but I have learned to handle most of them. That is good to hear. Film uh, was premiered uh, in 2003, a long time ago, 17 years ago. Yes, but I used like six, seven years on it. So you needed seven years to finish it. Yeah, yes. It took, took a long time to, to, to find the right, to, to, to find the truth in it, because it's such, a, it's such a difficult team. A man searching for who is he, uh, I mean, it's it's a banal cliche. It, I mean, it's really easy to get pretentious and and uh, and go for cliches and so on. So we worked a lot with editing. You know how to how to make it uh, something that rings true and also something that can be relevant for other than me to be universal. Uh, film narration is a uh, voiceover and uh, when I was watching it I had impression that you were sitting somewhere observing yourself and write, write, writing and then I discovered that you're not just a film director but, but also a writer and in the film you mentioned Mishima and Bukowski but the another author I had in mind that after watching it is Karl Knausgård. I was I was actually ahead of him a little bit there. I think he came some years after. I think so. The first book was published in two thousand and nine. I think. There's a lot of. I mean, it's it's the same premise in a way. I, I don't. I have of course read it, but but it's the same premise to just try to find uh, the truth in a way, or what the subjective truth looks like for him personally and for me personally. I, I mean, in that sense, we're in the same league, but we also differ very much because I don't, I mean, I try to crystallize like in small short films, even small poems, one could say, but he kind of goes all over the place. I mean, he's, he just writes a lot. It's a big, big epic work. It is a different form, but there are a lot of similarities, like you both describe small everyday details and there are same family patterns and relationships with your fathers. Yes. Oh, that's true. I mean, there's many similarities. Yeah, that, that is true. Uh, he's, um, but also, I think, I don't know if he said it to himself, but I, there was a writer who said, if you're gonna write true about yourself, you have to pretend that you're dead. That means that you have nothing to lose. And, and I think he writes like that. And I guess I tried to direct like that to, 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 you know, to don't, that you don't hold back. I mean, you are as true as you can be. You used a lot of private archive material, like uh, private footages and photos. And in a way you involved your family, friends and ex-girlfriends. What were they? their reactions and uh, you had to remove some scenes later in the editing. I have to tell you the truth. I mean, Knauskor was much more decent than me. He contacted the one who were involved in the book before the book came out, as far as I understand and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I mean, in documentary, ordinarily you, you use like a letter of commitment. They have to sign that it's, it's, it's fine that you are in it. I didn't care at all. I just I, I asked nobody. I just I just told it the way I wanted to ruthlessly without thinking about the consequences. So I didn't do anything about it. But I can say in 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 after after it, it was nobody who has. My mother has never seen it. I guess she 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 suspects that it's not a good thing for her to see. But. Um, my my uh, my now wife for twenty years she did she didn't like the film with all the girls and and 
sexuality and 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 uh, all this but uh, otherwise i had no uh, i have had no complaints but i didn't do it ethically right in that sense i just because then i would have to moderate it i guess because you you then you start the process but i just wanted it to be the truth as far as i could see it and and and, and depict it so i i I was ruthless there, but again, I was dead. So what's the problem? I think it was David Bowie who said that uh, he wanted to kill Ziggy Stardust as a fake persona he created. And in the film, there is also that line where you said that uh, persona is the mask we all wear and it has to be destroyed. Yeah, it, it, I mean, the whole thing came from a very special place. I had given up. I mean, I had given up in a way my career. I had given up my program, my personality, because it didn't really do me well with not just the drinking and the destructive behavior, but but it, it was just not a good program. I, I, I didn't trust it anymore. But then I went very many years parallel to this in meditation. So. In, in quite some passages, I had a distance between, I'm getting a little complicated, but I had a distance between me and the personality in a way, so I could see my personality from a distance. I was still my personality, but I could see it from a distance with a, with a quite clear view. And, and from that came the film. I mean, that's also, I mean, you can feel it in the tone in the film. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, observational and 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 and, and uh, neutral in in how i describe whatever happens in drama it i i, I it's I, I really feel that i i uh, communicate it in a when i show it in a kind of distant way distanced way and that was because i i, I, I that was the place i was at at that time I, I was not so connected to the world. I was mostly at retreats or alone for many years and, and um, not so connected with the world. And that's the place I, I, uh, I told it from. When you went to India, as you said, you still had your bad habits and in the same time you started to meditate. So what was, what was the, the first idea you had to go there to heal or to make uh, a film because there is one scene with the Indian family when where you said like I didn't care about their problems and str life struggles I just wanted to ha have good photos yeah that's a scene who shows how self-absorbed I am my, my, my how, how, how little empathy I have and, and but at the same time understanding it I, I have a kind of grasp of it but but actually um, my son is calling, sorry. Uh, and um, but but actually, I I I, I lied to uh, to um, what's it called uh, film commissioner, uh, and I said that I was going to go to India to have a breakthrough as a Mumbai actor or extra actor. So that's how I got the money to go to India because I didn't have any money at the time. So I actually the film project officially was to to show me breaking through in in in, in Bollywood. Uh, so, so you know, and that's why I um, got money and 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 some films so I could could travel with. And that's also an excuse for filming down there. But it was actually based on a, a fake story to a film commissioner. And did you know about your guru before you went to India? I went to many retreats before going to India. And then, then I realized how, how strong meditation influenced me and how much it helped me. And I tried these strange meditations, but they really helped me. And I, I thought I had to go to the source. And that was Usho in, uh, in, uh, in Pune. He was dead when I, I he was not uh, there when I came there. But they still had his place and they still did, did this meditation. But my motive for going there, the real motive was that they, have, they had a lot of therapy down there, which I hope would um, help me untangle my twisted personality. Was that the process? And is it over? Because at the end of the film, you look like a completely different person. 
Well, I, I handle them. I mean, the whole thing with personality is that you have to understand it's the construction. But in order to understand that it's a construction, you have to understand the construction in itself. And that was what I did in India, you know, why, why did I like this? Why do I react like that? Why do I treat uh, women like that? Why ha do I have a destructive? You have to understand the construction and by on, when you understand it, then you can also um, handle it because you, I mean, there's a cliche with therapy that you get rid of your personality, but that's not my experience. It's just, you just have to handle it. Uh, so, so you don't, you know, so you know how it works, like it, not like a clock maybe, but, but, but you know how it works so you can, ah, here comes this guy. Okay, now be careful. Now, now that's a, you know that path from before because you know the construction. Don't go down that path. So, so in a way, I mean, do you think if you saw the film, do you think uh, with with my personality before therapy and meditation, I would last twenty years in a middle class marriage? That's 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 you know that's that's just the, my program from before it's just not possible because it's too much restlessness too much uh destructive forces going on but so so yeah it works but i still have my personality uh, i mean it that's how, just how it is you you can't uh, unless you kind of become jesus or buddha and i'm very far from that <laughs> I, I believe me <laughs> After this film, there was Gunnar Goes God, uh, your trip to Egypt. Uh, and what was that about? Well, uh, I mean, it's, it was a, it was the same kind of search in a way, but now I didn't only look at myself so much, but all, I looked at, you know, spirituality in, 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 a, in a more broader perspective, but through myself and my team around, because I was very fascinated that so-called spiritual people, Christians, Muslims, uh, Buddhists, and I mean, it, they seemed, I mean, this is very banal, but obviously most of these guys have a much more content life than we people of the neurotic middle class. And I, 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 and I was like, I had to find out why. why. Why are we so, we have so much, and we are so neurotic and so restless and so unhappy and antidepressants and what have you. And then you have these guys, especially these uh, Coptic monks I met then in, uh, in, in, in the desert of uh, Egypt, uh, who had nothing and were Eremites. They lived alone maybe for many years in a cave and, uh, and they were so happy. So I just, ha and then I just wanted to compare those two kind of social structures uh, without making any judgments. I mean, obviously I had made my choice. I, I, I'm not the monk still. Uh, I'm in the middle class because uh, it works well when you have kids and it's a functional thing, but still we have to ask questions about this structure because there's many problems in it also. And what is the question for the third part of the trilogy? Well, it's my most tricky, uh, tricky one. Uh, it's, it's, you know, what, what is love for me? What is love? It's the essence of it in a way, I, I, because I, I, I really want to understand how that works in me and how that works in the structures around me. Um, and it's tricky because talking about pretentious theme and, and, and it's so full of myths and, you know, all, I mean, the whole society is clustered with labels and what love is, but um, I, I don't uh, identify with much of it. And I try to find out what that, that is, and it's basically around, actually it's around my love for my, my son, uh, who's now 18. So I follow kind of all relationship for 18 years now to try to understand something. Is it also going to be made uh, of the archive material? Yes, yeah, I've shot on and off, yeah, for 18 years. 
yeah so 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 and and we're still editing on it it's it's the same with as with guna goes comfortable that we have to find a form that's uh, that works outside the private sphere in a way and it ha also it has to be i mean it, i don't know what you think but i wanted you know guna goes comfortable to be entertaining you know to entertaining to be seducing i mean it, it should be a good r ride as a film in itself i mean i've seen so many men or, or uh, films about men who pity themselves uh, and it's it's just it's just no fun and it's also about people taking themselves seriously and 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 i don't take myself seriously uh, what was the festival life of the film so we've been at idfa we've been at the boy we've been at silver dogs we went all over the place suddenly because people saw that i have there was a code there that was uh, saying something true i guess and also the form was i mean it's very primitive in the film as as you know i mean it's a cheap camera and, and as as i mean there's actually no photographer I, often i just gave the camera to people in the streets and i mean there's there's no official photographer anyway when I'm walking in the streets or whatever, I mean, everything is just Im improvised with people around me and so, but, but it, it made a certain style, which, 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 uh, which worked. So, so it, it's been to a lot of, a lot of festivals and, and uh, in it's a long time ago. <laughs> was it screened on television also? Yes, it's been, uh, it was, and this was a surprise for me. It was bought by, at the time, Canal Digital. So it was, went, um, cable in whole of scandinavia and it went norwegian television and so on which was surprised because first uh, especially norwegian tv channel they thought i was so uh, unethical unethical for example a scene with my dead father that's a scene which which at least you have to ask yourself a lot of ethical question if it's is the right thing to do uh, so they were afraid first but then they showed it which was uh, i was really happy with Thank you for this talk, Gunnar.